2024 Top Stadium Club officially releases today, Wednesday, November 6th. And in today's video, I have the top 10 most valuable cards according to me. So what's going on, guys? It's Grip Rip. And before we get into the video today, let's plug the giveaway as usual. So at 10,000 subscribers, we're giving away hobby packs and the newest product available. All you got to do is be subscribed, like this video, turn on the post notifications for all the content on the channel. And last but not least, leave a comment in the comment section of this video and countless other videos on what has been your favorite moment this baseball season. I will pick the winner once we hit the goal of 2024, which is 10,000, which we're like 20 off if that right now. So we should be able to hit it like over the weekend, if not sooner. So we will be giving away packs probably this week, next week, sometime. Just don't matter. I'm actually, I'm in the past. This is, this is yesterday. I'm, I'm in Tuesday, you're in Wednesday. So I will have to wait and see. But either way, let's get into it. So before I do, but look how, look how cool this shirt is, man. Look how cool this shirt is. I don't know if you guys can see the whole shirt, but look at this, man. Look at this shirt. Of course, Christmas merch is available now. This shirt, along with two other designs, the Grip and Rip Santa, a fan favorite from last year. Click the link down below. It's there. Of course, he has the Grip and Rip on the on the on the like the white part of his hat. And I don't know if you could tell if I could angle my shirt right here. There is a baseball, as like the ball of his hat is a baseball, as you can see right there. There's stitching like baseball stitches on his ball. So, really, really cool shirt grab it fan favorite from last year is back right now so here we go let's get into it so this list i tried to make a little different because obviously we do a lot of these top tens here on the channel and of course we have a lot of products coming out the next couple weeks i'm gonna try to freshen it up a little bit this list is not a cookie cutter list from last time with alan and ginter of course all the guys now and ginter are in this set as well so we made it a little bit different. So let's start out with number 10. We are going to Jason Dominguez at number 10. Jason Dominguez had a pretty interesting season. Um, you know, I don't really know what is going to happen with Jason Dominguez as a Yankee. Um, there is a rumor, a pretty big rumor from a very valid source that they are going to be trying to trade him this offseason. I could see it. Because they claim they have no room for him. Um, I assume he will probably get a decent return back from wherever they trade him to. But as you can see here, he only has 56 at-bats in the regular season. Eight hits, two homers, four RBIs. Uh, OPS, a 617 with an average of 179. He really didn't play too much at all. He actually sat basically most of the year in AAA um, for the Yankees. So I don't really know what's going to happen with Jason Dominguez. Something just tells me in my gut, come the winter meetings um, next month, he might be traded. I could definitely see a reality where that is the truth. So Yankees fans, I know there's a lot of heartbreak going on right now in the in the New York, uh, at least where the Yankees fans and Mets fans, really. But uh, yeah, Jason Dominguez, I don't think he might be a Yankee next year. We'll have to wait and see, though. I don't know. Depends. Depends on what they do. Either way, we're going to number nine. Number nine, we're going to Jackson Holiday. Jackson Holiday had a very very weird year along with jason dominguez those two guys two very bright up-and-coming players had very weird years so obviously jackson holiday had a great spring training was on fire in spring training was on fire in triple a because they started him out in triple a this year called them up when they call him up exactly april 10th so 10 days 11 days like two weeks essentially into the regular season um, and then struggled mightily. He got sent down, did okay in the minor leagues in AAA again, and then got called back up towards the end of the year and just didn't translate at all. But either way, let's read his regular season stats here. 190 at-bats, 36 total hits, 5 home runs, 23 RBIs, an average of 189 and an OPS of 566. Again, only 20 years old. I wouldn't write him off by any stretch of the imagination. He has a lot of time to still develop. There's probably a realistic possibility next year. He might, I mean, I don't know what the Orioles are thinking, but if I was the Orioles and I was their, like, farm director or GM or whatever, I would probably sit him down in AAA probably for the first half of 2025. 
um, just to get his confidence going because that's what it, it's a lack of confidence at the end of the day when it comes to you know young players like this. Um, so I would probably sit him down in Triple A at least for at least 35 40 percent at least if not half of the season so we'll have to wait and see what happens with them but uh I, I don't i don't i ain't gonna write him off by any stretch of the means here um he'll be pretty good in the future so either way we're going to number eight we're gonna switch it up a little bit we're going to the world series champions man although when it comes to their website there is no mention of the world series champions literally anywhere on this website but either way either way we're going to yoshinobu yamamoto so yamamoto is on this list he uh seven and two record we'll we'll go over both his postseason and regular season i guess seven and two regular season record era at three even 18 total games he had an innings pitched of 90 total innings strikeouts 105 with a whip of 1.11 uh postseason 2-0 3.86 era four total games uh 18 innings and two-thirds pitched in a whip of 0.96 with 15 total strikeouts that's pretty good man he had a really really good postseason that um era is kind of lopsided but um he had one bad game i think it was against the i believe it was the padres i'm pretty sure it had to have been against the padres um and other than that he was really really good the rest of the way so either way yamamoto i really don't like to put pitchers on my list too often i really don't but since he won the world series and he's a rookie i was like well that could probably you know up his value a little bit because when someone maybe pulls an autograph of Yamamoto, which they are in stadium club, um, you know, people might think that's like a, a grail hit or a big hit, which it, it is a big hit. Of course, young rookie pitcher, um, for the world series champion. So, you know, that's why I put him in this list. I don't like to put pitchers too often in these lists. Of course, there's one big pitcher coming up later in the video, but, um, other than that, I typically don't like to put rookies, uh, pitchers. Cause I always say batters, are more valuable than pitchers that's just how the market always determines pitchers but either way we are going to number seven kyle manzardo kyle manzardo is number seven kyle manzardo back when we thought what update was going to look like with paul Skeens and kyle manzardo but here's the thing tops never really told us that you know all these other guys were going to be an update as base cards as well which at the time, we didn't know that, but at the time of when Manzardo it got called up, we thought Skeens and Manzardo were going to be number one and number two of update. Well, Manzardo, unfortunately, got pushed down a little bit, but still very, very good nonetheless. Very, very good player. So let's look at his regular season stats first. 145 total at-bats. He had a 34 hits, five home runs, 15 RBIs, a 234 average of the 730 or 703 OPS and his postseason stats 19 at bats, two runs scored, six hits, one home run, two RBIs, and an average of 316 with an OPS at 842. He had a pretty solid postseason. I remember he had a home run on um, that one game that was pretty clutch. Um, he had a pretty good postseason. Overall, I think he's going to be a very, very good player. Um, of course, he was a Tampa Bay Ray prospect at one point. They traded him. I don't remember exactly what the trade was. Um, but either way, Kyle Manzardo, 24 years old. He is probably going to be a cornerstone piece of this team, I would assume, going forward. Can't really say too sure because you just really don't know what these guys, but I could definitely see a reality where he is a cornerstone player for this team for a very, very, very long time. So here we go to number, I keep on forgetting my loose count, number six. Number six is Wyatt Langford. By far, probably one of the most interesting players one of my most favorite rookies outside of one obvious one obviously that i liked watching in 2024 so wyatt langford got called up on opening day so really really cool to see that um one shy of 500 at bats 126 total hits 16 homers 74 rbis 19 stolen bases a average of 253 with an ops of 740 by far one of their best players. I don't really know what the Rangers have in store for 2025. Of course, Max Scherzer just elected free agency, so I don't know if he'll be back. But either way, World Series champs in 2023. Very interesting year in 2024. Didn't get back to the postseason, obviously, in 2024. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with them. But Wyatt Langford is for sure, along with like Evan Carter, going to be cornerstone pieces, obviously, with Corey Seager in there as well and uh marcus simeon of course so either way 
Wyatt Lankford takes the prize at number six. Number five, here we get to the good stuff. Here is where the list really picks up now, and these guys are going to be the ones you absolutely want to get. Not that these other guys are not good hits, because they are, but these next top five are going to be the ones that you really, really, really would like to pull in Stadium Club. So either way, here we go with number five. We are going to Mason Win. Yes, Mason Win. And I always find it funny, you know, obviously I'm a Pirates fan, right? And as you can see, no one, or, uh, you have Nolan Arenado right here. My face is covering Nolan Arenado. And as you can see, Paul Goldschmidt's taken away. So that tells you, uh, for all you Cardinals fans, Paul Goldschmidt is not coming back as a St. Louis Cardinal in 2025. So that's pretty interesting there. Mason Wynn was literally the cover, like, here. And they changed it back to, I don't know who that guy is on the bottom. I, I have no idea who that guy is. But either way, um, let's look at Mason Wynn's stats here. Um, let's see. 2024 regular season, 587 total at-bats. He got 157 hits, 15 home runs, 57 RBIs, 11 stolen bases, an average of 267, an OPS of 730. Very, very, very good season for Mason Wynn. Probably the brightest spot in the Cardinals' future. The Cardinals right now are in a little bit of a bind. I mean, of course, Paul Goldschmidt walks. Their pitchers, for the most part, all of them are free agents. They're probably not coming back. I think Arenado has one year left. I think next year's his last year on contract, I'm pretty sure. It's either that or 2026. I think it's 2025, but I could be wrong, right? Jordan Walker had a pretty down year, and Mason Wynn has probably been the brightest spot. I would. That's a fair assumption, I could say, with the Cardinals. I mean, I don't really know what the Cardinals do. Um, they're probably going to have to go young and build up, but I... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the Cardinals have in store outside of 2025 and beyond, but Mason Wynn is definitely one of those guys that's going to perplex them into their next playoff era, which as a Pirates fan would not like to see, but i got to be unbiased when I do these videos, unfortunately, so that's why I can't say those types of things. But either way, either way, number four, we're going to Jackson Chorio, another NL Central opponent for the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, he had a very, very good year. Probably is going to finish third, I would say, in Rookie of the Year votes. That's a pretty fair assumption, I think, to say. Uh, obviously, two big National League rookies are probably going to be first and second. He's probably going to be third. But again, I'll say the same thing as I say with Merrill. Any other given year outside of this year with Skeens and Merrill in this, uh, in this rookie class, Chirio probably would be Rookie of the Year in the uh, National League. Um, so let's look at his stats. Let's look at his regular season stats first. 528 at-bats, 150 or 145 hits, 21 homers, 79 RBIs, stolen bases 22, average 275, and an OPS of 791. A very, very bright spot for the Milwaukee Brewers, of course, with Willie Adamas probably not coming back. And Reese Hoskins probably not coming back for the Brewers. Going to be interesting to see what they do in the offseason. I don't know what they have in store. Obviously, pitching is going to be a big one. And they have to fill that shortstop spot where Willie Adamas is most likely not coming back to. Um, so it's going to be pretty interesting. But either way, Chorio is definitely probably going to be their face. I mean, there's a reason why they extended him before he even got called up which is crazy to think because that's never happened until, like, with him. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with him. But either way, very good player. Number three, we're switching it up to Ellie De La Cruz. So Ellie De La Cruz typically is a little bit lower on my list. But I said, you know what? He's basically been the cover boy of 2024 tops. Every single product they have released this year, of course, he has been in. Obviously, he got called up June 6th of 2023. Don't know how he still classify as a rookie or getting rookie cards at this point, but might as well just throw him in the list because he has a rookie card logo on him, right? So either way, 618 at bats, 160 hits, 25 homers, 76 RBI, stolen bases, 67, almost 70 home runs, average 259 OPS 810. Like I said with Mason Wynn and Churio. By far, 
the brightest spot on this team for the Cincinnati Reds. Obviously, Cincinnati Reds, very interesting year, basically finishing last with the Pirates in the division. They're like literally like one game apart from each other from last place. Um, of course, they fired their manager and hired Terry Francona. I think Terry Francona is going to be a great signing for them. That He's going to turn that team into a playoff team. I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. So I'm really jealous of that because we should have fired our manager too, but we didn't for whatever reason. But either way, Ellie by far the best up-and-coming star for their team. Going to be pretty interesting to see what he does next year. Do I think he replicates the 67 stolen bases? He can get close. He might even get to 70. I don't know. It's going to be very hard to do, but he had a very good season this year. So either way, number two. Number two, we're going to Jackson Merrill. Here we go, Jackson Merrill. I know people are going to start with the comments. Why is he number two? Should he be rookie of the year? No. No, no, no. Next month in December, when the winter meetings are like, what, December 7th or something like that, when they announce the rookies of the year, you will see he comes in second place. So sorry, Padres fans. I know you're pulling for your guy, but like I said with Chorio, if there was one other guy in this list who wasn't up this year as a rookie, he would probably win rookie of the year. It, it would. It would it's pretty obvious. Like, look at these stats, right? We'll go over his regular season stats. 554 at bats, 162 total hits, 24 homer, 90 RBIs, 16 stolen bases, a 292 average, and an OPS at 826. That's very, very good. Very, very, very good, but it's not good enough to win rookie of the year. It's not good enough to win rookie of the year because obviously there's a really, really good dominant pitcher that we're going to talk about here in just one second. But before we do, let me tell you about today's sponsor, the video. So this video today is sponsored by SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the official ticket market of Major League Baseball. We have partnered up to deliver huge savings for you guys who watch my videos. So click the link down below. Download the app today. Use my promo code GRIP and RIP. That is promo code GRIP and RIP at checkout. And you're going to save $20 off your first purchase. So next year's MLB tickets, at least for the Pirates, go on sale in December. I assume a lot of other teams are going to be like that as well. So if you want to get your tickets to opening day, bobblehead nights, firework nights, all-you-can-eat hot dog nights or whatever they got at your stadiums, listen, man, SeatGeek and I got you covered. So here we go, man. Number one, this is obvious. I mean, I'm not even trying to be biased. I know someone's going to say, oh, grip and rip, you're biased. You're a Pirates fan. You're putting Paul Skeens at number one. Listen, man, he is by far, if you ask 29 out of the 30 teams, like fans, they will all say Paul Skeens, except the Padres fans, of course, will not say that. But Paul Skeens, let's look at these stats. 11-3, and three, realistically, probably could have been like 15-1, and one, realistically, but the Pirates didn't give him run support or the bullpen choked his games that he pitched in. So his record should be a little better, but it's beside the point. A 196 ERA, almost at average. 196 ERA. He has innings of 133, 170 strikeouts. Could have easily gotten 200 if he got called up on opening day. And a whip of 0.95. That is as dominant as you can get. So he is by far going to win Rookie of the Year. It's not even going to be close. It's not going to be unanimous, I don't think. It's probably, I mean, I don't know how many people vote. But in terms of like percentages, I think it's going to be 75%, 25%, uh, 25% Merrill, 75% Skeens. That's realistically um, what it's going to be. Um, so yeah, and that is uh, basically my list, guys. That is basically my list. This is the top 10 most valuable cards, according to me, in 2024. Tops Stadium Club. Drop your list down in the, in the comment section below. Would love to hear what your guys' top 10 is. It could be, who knows? Maybe you put Skeens at like number 8 on your list. Who knows? So type your lists down in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one.